This video introduces you to some of Illustrator's object transformation techniques. We've already seen in earlier videos that we can use the selection tool to select objects or groups and use the bounding box to perform simple selections. Pressing the shift key to drag a corner handle up or down to resize proportionately. But what if we want to select an individual component within a group. Every time I click with the selection tool, it selects the entire group. Illustrator has an isolation mode, which we can enter by double clicking on a group. And as soon as you do that, you can select the individual subgroups within the group or even subgroups a lot deeper within very complex artwork. As soon as you do that, as long as the bounding box is displayed, we can use the same technique to select one of the corner handles, move objects around without having to ungroup this artwork. To jump back into normal editing mode, either double click in an empty area on your artboard or press the escape key on the keyboard. And we've now resize some components within the group without actually ungrouping this. Illustrator also has a number of transform tools. Rotation, reflect, skill, shear, reshape, and a free transform tool. Let's take a look at the rotate tool first of all. If I want to select an object to temporarily access the selection tool, press the command or control key because I already had the rotate tool selected. Um, you can see that the point around which this leaf rotates is the center point. To change the point around which you rotate, select the transform tool first, then click to set your point of origin around which you want to rotate. If I now click and drag, you can see that it rotates around this additional point. Another technique that relates to that is, and we'll use this on the reflect tool, that once again we can set the point around which we want to apply a reflect transformation, but we also want to tell Illustrator that we want to perform a vertical transformation. If we press the Option key and click on an imaginary mirror, we can now select that we want to flip this leaf vertically. And not only do I want to flip it, as you can see in the preview, I also would like to create a copy as I do that. Let's use that same technique on this petal. I want to copy and rotate this petal in 30 degrees angles around this particular center point. So I go back to the rotate tool, hover over the center point and Option or Alt click in that point. This provides me with access to the dialog box. I can now enter the 30 degree angle and press the copy key. Now repeating this over and over can be quite time consuming, but Illustrator is clever. It has remembered the last transformation that we've applied and we can therefore apply the transform again command and take note of the shortcut there to repeat what we've done last. If I press Command D or Control D repeatedly, I can continue to copy and rotate around that predefined center point. Illustrator also has a free transform tool. Let me select this tower here. 
If I select the free transform tool, I can just like selecting an object or a group with the selection tool, rotate or scale this object, pressing the shift key once again to scale proportionately. But I can do some additional things. If I select the middle handle here and press the command or control key, I can shear this object. When adding the shift key, I can constrain that movement and shear this along a horizontal line or vertical line, depending on the direction that I go into. If I select one of the corner handles on the bounding box and press the command or control key, I can make individual changes. Select the, select the corner handle, press the command or control key, move that inwards. Here's another way in which we can apply some transformations to multiple objects at once. With the selection tool, select all of these little bugs down the bottom here. Each of these needs to be rotated around a certain angle individually. I could perform individual rotations on each object, but that would take time. Instead, if I go to the transform menu under the object menu, I can access the transform each command. This allows you to apply different types of transformations to multiple objects individually. Let's apply a rotation and select the preview box to see what happens. I can also move the objects a bit and I can scale them up either proportionately or unproportionately a bit at the same time. Click OK and you've applied multiple transformations to each of those individual objects using one command. So that was a short introduction to a number of transformation techniques.